Good afternoon, I'm Steve Hensley. First at four, heavy rain overnight leads to several flood warnings. In Clay County, the sheriff says a man drove on a flooded roadway and got himself into a bad situation. WYMT's Katie Cook has more on the rescue and the importance of watching for flooded roads. Steve, as you can see behind me, this roadway is still pretty flooded. Officials say a family of four crossed this roadway when floodwaters swept their car away. Luckily, a rescue team was able to get them out safely. It all happened around 8 this morning on Chop Bottom Road. First responders got a call about a car being submerged in water. When they arrived, a man, woman, and two kids were standing on the roof of that submerged car. The Clay County Sheriff wants to remind everyone of the importance of watching out for flooded roads. If you come across a roadway that's flooded, uh, don't drive through it. You don't know how deep it is, and it don't take much water to uh, take your vehicle downstream. Uh, as the old saying is, don't drown, turn around. The Clay County Sheriff said this was not the only water rescue responders had to make this morning, and it's something that happens far too often. In Clay County, Katie Cook, WYMT Mountain News. The family rescued this morning were taken to Advent Health in Manchester for treatment of possible injuries. A man died in a single vehicle car crash yesterday in Pike County. Kentucky State Police tell us the crash happened on Widow's Branch in Phelps around 3.30 p.m. The initial investigation determined Marty Blankenship lost control of his vehicle and hit a rock wall. The Pike County Coroner's Office pronounced Blankenship dead at the scene. Troopers believed no drugs or alcohol were involved in the crash. Well, we saw plenty of rain over the last few days, but that rain has finally moved out. Sunshine is moving in, but so are cooler temperatures. But it's a nice scene around the region this afternoon. Interstate 75 looking nice in Mount Vernon. Not too many cars out on the roads, and we're finally seeing blue skies again. But those temperatures, anywhere from the upper 50s to mid 40s, those cooler temperatures you see to the northwest, those are on the way for tonight and even into tomorrow and satellite and radar. We've been mostly clear throughout the day, so it's nice to finally see that sunshine, but more clouds will move in tonight as the back end of that system that brought us all that rain will be making its final arrival. So here's your dinner time forecast. We stay clear for the most part. Few clouds increase and those temperatures will cool down as well. I will have your New Year's Eve and New Year's Day forecast here in just a little bit, Steve. All right, thank you, Kelly. We are less than 24 hours away now from Kentucky football's bowl game against Virginia Tech in Charlotte. WYMT's Will Puckett attended media day this morning, and he has more from outside Bank of America Stadium. Hey, Will. Steve, hello from Charlotte. Not a cloud in the sky after yesterday's rain. And while we're less than 24 hours away from kickoff, earlier this morning, select players from both Kentucky and Virginia Tech talked with the media. They previewed tomorrow's game and this season as a whole. Kentucky's defensive lineman Calvin Taylor knows getting to where they are today was not a guarantee. It's real special because few would have told us a couple months ago that We've had certain things that happened on our team and injuries and different things like that. Uh, we couldn't believe it, but you know, we're just a, a tough bunch, you know. Adversity, you know, is just next man up. Noon tomorrow on ESPN, Steve, is kickoff time between the Kentucky Wildcats and the Virginia Tech Hokies. Will Kentucky go back to back years with a bowl victory? We're going to have to wait again just less than 24 hours to find that out. I'll have much more throughout the evening here from Charlotte. For now, I'll send it back to you, Steve. All right, Will, thank you very much. People in a small Texas town are coming to grips today with the sudden loss of two parishioners killed Sunday during a church service. CBS's Maria Villarreal has the latest from White Settlement, about 15 miles from Fort Worth kind of halfway turned towards me and that's when I took the shot. Volunteer security director Jack Wilson is being hailed as a hero for taking down a gunman Sunday inside the West Freeway Church of Christ. I took out some evil and that's the way I'm again I'm, that's the way I'm processing it is I took out someone that was evil and had evil intent. Armed congregants, members of a church security team, confronted the shooter just seconds after he pulled a shotgun from his pants and killed two parishioners. This church responded in seconds 
and, and reacted and saved the lives of potentially the rest of the people in that church, which, were, which I was told was uh, well over 200 people. Church members identified the victims as Richard White and Tony Wallace. We lost two great men today. But it could have been a lot worse. The FBI is working with local and state investigators to figure out what may have motivated the shooter. So my understanding is they didn't necessarily have a direct connection. He had been here, I think, several times. And, and they always are, I think, from my understanding, they're very open to helping people that are that are transient, they're homeless, and, and probably going to be very difficult to determine exactly what his motivations were other than maybe mental illness. Isabel Ariola and her family noticed the man sitting toward the back of the church. I don't feel comfortable. I said he just, you know, is giving me a bad vibe. She was within feet of the gunman when he started shooting. I tell my husband, let's go, give me my baby, and I just said, I got to get her out of here. Jack Wilson says the shooter was wearing a fake beard and that he was being watched from the moment he walked into the church. Mireya Villarreal, CBS News, White Settlement, Texas. At 6 o'clock, we'll talk to a Kentucky pastor about their security team in the wake of that terrible shooting in Texas. There are new details coming in about the stabbing attack at a Hanukkah celebration in Monsey, New York, 30 miles north of New York City. The knife ambush happened Saturday around 10 p.m. at the home where more than 100 Orthodox Jews were gathered to celebrate Hanukkah. Five people were stabbed, and the suspect is accused of leaving the scene in a car. One person was able to get the suspect's license plate number. Police later apprehended Grafton Thomas in New York City. We see anger, we see hatred exploding. New York Governor Andrew Cuomo says there's been around 13 anti-Jewish incidents in the last few weeks. Thomas pleaded not guilty during a court appearance. His family says Thomas has a long history of mental illness, but no known history of anti-Semitism. His bond is $5 million. So you are a wanted man. What one thing should you not do? Maybe live stream your location. Volusia Sheriff's deputies in Florida were able to locate found him live streaming on Instagram. Officers surrounded the home Thursday night. Once they got there and announced themselves, Gaines eventually surrendered and was taken into custody without incident. The 20-year-old was wanted on weapons charges, grand theft auto, and other things. The Senate impeachment trial of President Donald Trump cannot proceed until House Speaker Nancy Pelosi delivers the articles of impeachment to the Senate. Democrats say a trial without witnesses or access to documents related to the president's decision to withhold military aid to Ukraine is not a fair trial. His Republican colleagues say the trial will happen and that the president will like the result. Let's head over to Wall Street now on this Monday afternoon. The Dow closes down today more than 183 points. Neil Ines, a writer, musician, and Monty Python collaborator, has died at the age of 75. A statement on his website says he died of natural causes yesterday without warning. Ines was part of the Bonzo Dog Doodah Band and the Ruddles, a Beatles parody group. He also became part of the band Grimm's and developed a close relationship with the Monty Python team in the mid-1970s writing music for their albums and TV series, and appearing in both their large and small screen outings. Former President Jimmy Carter returned to his hometown church in Plains, Georgia yesterday for the first time since his brain surgery last month. He sat with his wife, Rosalyn, in the front row at the Baptist Church. The oldest living president typically teaches Sunday school at the church, but less canceled so he could have time to recover. He is a for cancer and had several recent hospitalizations. He is 95 years old. Straight ahead on first and four, 10 days. That's how long students in Seattle have to get a vaccination or they cannot return to school. We're going to get colder tonight than we have in a while. I'll have that temperature trend in my forecast coming up.